start with, let me welcome the discussion leaders who I have with me in the room and ask them to very quickly talk about, about their organizations and what they're doing in a very brief two, three lines. And then I'll go through my brief presentation and then we'll break into the circles. So first of all, we have Tanya from Beer Tech, which is an incubator in Lebanon. Karen, can you help me with the mic for Tanya to talk very quickly about Beer Tech? And Tanya will be leading a group. So if what Beer Tech are doing is of interest to you, please join Tanya's group to discuss the Beer Tech experience right after my presentation. Hi everybody, uh, I'm Tanya Saba Mazraani from uh, Beritech. Uh, Beritech is an incubator that was uh, started up that started up in Lebanon in 2002, and right now we have two incubators of uh, 4,000 uh, square meters each and one fund of six million dollars helping out entrepreneurs. I'll guess I'll be talking more in in the circle session, right? Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Tanya. Then I'd like to welcome Dr. Osama Fayyad. Uh, the head of Oasis 500, a new incubator in Amman. Okay. Um, uh, Osama Fayyad, uh, Oasis 500 is um, more than just an incubator. We are running an incubator as part of it. Our goal is to fund 500 new technology startups in the areas of ICT, digital media, and mobile. Uh, the 500 companies will receive at least 15K in funding dollars uh, and an additional 50K, and then we also prepare them and help them with the angel network that we do. Uh, and the, uh, the part that's different than an incubator is to enter the incubator, you need to go through a boot camp, which is very tough uh, for training to make sure you have all the right skills and, and you know what you're doing in terms of the business and so forth. And uh, the other part is the exit. Uh, unlike many incubators in the region, we don't allow you to stay more than two to three months, and if you're lucky and got follow-on funding, another six months, uh, as opposed to you know many incubators do years here. So this is a high-speed, uh, high-quality incubator with funding. Excellent. Right. So actually, I guess what what we're doing, what we're talking about today, is not just incubators, but incubators and accelerators, and sometimes you know the ecosystem around them, such in the case of investors, which is an angel funding network, and we have Youssef from investors. So in a in a couple of lines, what do you do? Youssef Hamza from Investors. Uh, we're part of a business angel network that raises financing for startup companies or companies looking to expand between you know, $40,000, $50,000 and $5 million. So in the last six months, we've raised about $10 million for six companies. And we deal on a daily basis with other kind of government organizations, incubators, private companies, etc., in order to speed along the whole process and as he said, the ecosystem. Thank you. We have Dr. Ibrahim Babili. From, so Dr. Ibrahim comes from a different background, from a government background. Basically, you know, he heads the National Industrialization Development Strategy in Saudi Arabia, which includes as part of it the recommendation of setup of business incubators across Saudi Arabia. So, Doctor, can you give us a brief? Assalamu um, alaikum. We, our work on developing the National Industrial Strategy for Saudi Arabia included many dimensions, but one of it is SMEs and entrepreneurship, and for that there was a need, significant need to provide incubation, funding, and mentorship. As uh, part of the National Industrial Strategy, a significant emphasis is on the industrial uh, SMEs particularly and how to enable them to succeed because we believe that ultimately they're going to be the job creators for Saudi Arabia. Thank you. Thank you. And Peter? runs a very interesting accelerator program inside Philips. So Peter, can you? Hi, I'm Peter De Benedictus. I'm the area marketing officer for the Middle East for Philips. We run an annual entrepreneurship and innovation competition specifically for the Middle East. Uh, and so we're here over the next two days to first of all connect with incubators to help us get the word out about the competition. It's uh, extremely interesting. We send uh, leading innovators to our high-tech campus in Eindhoven for an all-expense paid six months uh, immersion in our high-tech campus in Eindhoven to help them go from the drawing board to hopefully the boardroom and raise finance. So I'm here to raise 
awareness about the program, and secondly, to help our first round of selected innovators connect with financial institutions who are interested in making those angel investments. Thanks. Thank you, Peter. And then Maher Qaddoura Maher runs Maidan, which is an accelerator incubator in Jordan. Maidan is a privately held incubator. I use my own money to invest in the companies, so I sit on them like chicken on eggs <laughs> to make sure so we don't recycle bullshit. We focus on work to produce, so this is a new model. After we invest, we later on, we bring in people to co-invest with us, but after we ready the people with the ideas. So I focus people and ideas together. And we are not a real estate project. We focus a lot on wisdom and reusable know-how for the, for the uh, youth. Thank you, Maher. Omar Hamagne, CEO of Al Hassan uh, Science City and uh, founder of iPark Incubator in Jordan. Okay, yeah. Uh, iPark is a business incubator in Jordan that was established in 2003. Um, basically, iPark is a government incubator, a government supported incubator. What makes it unique, at least within the landscape of Jordan, is it was always run with a private sector mindset and mentality. Governments can develop programs, but for them to develop programs that support competitive businesses is a bit of a challenge. I think we have a good track record in having done that. And today, we bring as well into the game uh, IP commercialization office, and to help us generate more deal flow long term, we've developed uh, an entrepreneurship development capacity building center that's associated as well. And lastly, we're working with Osam and Oasis 500 and Maidan on developing an angel investors network in Jordan in partnership with all. Thank you. Now, where is Hani? Yeah. Hani. All right. My buddy Hani Sonbati who's co-founder of ID Developers, incubator in Egypt and TDF. Uh, hello, I've moved on since then. Uh, we're doing Sawari Ventures. Well, he knows, right? Cause, uh, but uh, Sawari Ventures is in itself a traditional venture capital firm, but uh, given the days these days and the, the, the market changes, there is a need for uh, what we call entrepreneurship labs. It's very similar to what Osama said and what uh, Maher Adura said, the difference is we, we like clustering by subject. So our first one will be based around apps, whether mobile apps or uh, social, ne social networking apps. And we're going to call it Flat Six because it happens that we live in a building that my partner owns and uh, uh, we're in Flat Nine at Sawari Ventures and there's a Flat Six. So that's, that's going to be our brand name, hopefully. Wow. <laughs> And one last, yeah, we are still investing our own money. So like Meher, we sit, hopefully we'll sit and hatch them. Excellent. And our guest, Mora Mor, who comes from Ireland, if you can introduce yourself very quickly and what you do. Just to explain, so I believe we have around 50 people in the room. Uh, after I go through a very quick presentation, we'll break into groups, hopefully of five people, around the discussion leaders uh, who just introduced themselves. So we'll rearrange the, circ the, the chairs into small circles, and then each group will discuss the experience of the particular discussion leader. And at the end of that, will come up with uh, basically one recommendation from each group about you know, how to improve the incubation landscape in, uh, in the Menasa region. Maura? Thank you, Haldun. Um, my name is Maura Moore. I lead Aventura Venture Partners, which is a venture development and corporate finance boutique in Dublin, Ireland. We have a presence in Jordan and in the UK. Um, uh, part of my claim to fame is I worked with the first European incubator um, in Limerick at the National Technological Park. I also sit on the advisory board of an ICT incubator in Dublin. Um, I work with entrepreneurs every day and so uh, this is a fantastic celebration and I'm delighted to be here. Thank you. Thank you everybody. So I mean, I'll make this very quick. I don't know. Can I? Can I go into the next slide, please? 
All right. So basically, you know, in, uh, in my view, every city, every neighborhood, every university, every big corporate deserves an incubator. And, you know, the whole notion about incubators is that they greatly increase the odds of success and reduce the risks of failures of startups. So there's something that, you know, can greatly contribute to job creation, economic growth, increased competitiveness, and wealth creation. Something that has been proven over years in various countries, various economic uh, uh, cycles, and in various setups, be them you know, inside academic institutions, associated with venture capital firms, private incubators, municipality incubators, etc. If we can go into the next slide, please. So we've talked about, and I guess, you know, in, in, in the introductions that the various discussion leaders have introduced, we've seen incubators who are more affiliated with government, incubators who are privately owned, incubators or accelerators who are corporate backed such as Philips one so incubators come in various flavors various types next slide please so I mean one of the greatest value of incubators is that you just go in and start focusing about your business so you start developing your product you start basically securing your clients you start hiring people and you basically remove all the administrative headaches so you don't have to worry about basically you know renting a place or getting a phone line or paying for the electricity bill or you know even some incubators you know keeping accounting books etc but over and beyond you know these logistical services incubators provide strategic advice for inexperienced entrepreneurs and this you know spans strategy uh, financial modeling, fundraising, recruitment, etc. And they leverage economies of scale. So one of the greatest thing, and I, I guess we've seen this everywhere. We've seen it in ID developers, we've seen it in iPark, we've seen it in Maidan, is that when you put a group of young entrepreneurs together, amazing things happen. They just start helping each other. Coming from here, all right. This is better now. Taken over by another workshop. So can we go into the next slide? So what do incubators offer? I mean, uh, uh, in the bare minimum, incubators provide facilities and business infrastructure, offices, furniture, electricity, data, connectivity, etc. Over and above that, they offer legal and accounting services, strategy planning, uh, contact base, partner identification and business development, recruitment of executives, board members, some incubators help in branding, advertising, and of course, you know, the basic IT infrastructure when needed. Next slide, please. Some of the best practices that you might want to talk about within your groups, what you have learned, you know, could, re could revolve around repeatable tools and processes, the role of incubators as cultural centers. Incubators go beyond basically, you know, the mission. Incubators are, you know, if I may say, you know, have a similar role in any neighborhood, similar to a public, to a public library, similar to a theater, similar to a youth center. They have a cultural role. They become a community. They become a mixer, a joining place where entrepreneurs, investors, mentors, all come together. Basically, the focus of incubators, some of the incubators that we're hearing about are sector specific, others are more generic. You know, their partnerships with corporations, uh, the resources that they have, the experience and the vision of these incubators. Next, please. And this is how incubators get their deal flow. So basically, through ties up with universities, and we have examples of these, such as in the case of IPAC and Princess Sumaya University, Angel Networks, uh, the, 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 the companies that are already incubated, the teams of the incubator business plan competition, and you know, Beer Tech have relevant examples in that, etc. 
think we have the last slide now. All right, one more slide. So this talks about processes that incubators use for the selection of companies to be incubated, including the quality of their business plans, basically the markets that they're addressing, the team and founder management, and the fit of the business with the rest of the portfolio of the incubator. Next, please. So this is, I mean, this is the light slide that sums it all together. You know, how incubators contribute to the community. So incubators act like this factory, that this machine, where entrepreneurs come in from the community, risk capital, sponsors, champions, investments, stakeholders. Inside the incubator, the incubator provides the counseling and mentoring, networking to the and know-how, the education, training, shared services. They produce companies and these companies give back to the community. So in summary, I cannot overemphasize the importance of incubators. What we will do now is that, you know, we will break into these small groups. I would, I would like to ask you to now basically go in small circles around the discussion leaders and, and basically come up within the next 20 minutes with one recommendation or best practice that you have developed in, incub in your incubator that you would like to share with the rest of the entrepreneurial venture capital and incubation community in the Middle East. After 20 minutes from now, we're going to basically listen to each discussion leader, share with us this single best practice, and then we're going to report everything in, in a solid outcome report that will be shared with policy leaders and stakeholders in the region.